Hey everyone, welcome to today's video on quasi static CV analysis of transistors via silver goody gate simulation. In this video, we will dive into the importance of the quasi static CV method. The gate voltage in this method is slowly swept to ensure the device stays in equilibrium at each point. This allows for accurate characterization of the two dimensional electron gas and heterostructure. And this is the key for optimizing high electron mobility transistor performance. We will cover how the CV curve helps us understand the device's behavior, including charge dynamics, threshold voltage, and the formation of the two dimensional electron gas. Stick around to see how these insights apply to aluminum gallium nitride, gallium nitride high electron mobility transistors focusing on gate control, threshold voltage, and the efficient modulation of the two-dimensional electron gas. Let's get started. So here is the code for uh, this uh, CV analysis. And I'm not going to go line by line, line by line through the code because I already explained the code in multiple other videos but i'm just going to cover the main parts so starting with the meshing the structure is running from 0 to 10 micrometers along the x direction and from 0 to 3 micrometers along the y direction and then we have multiple regions starting with sapphire then we have the aluminum nitride nucleation layer followed by the gallium nitride layer and then we have the aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride heterojunction over here also you see the different contexts the gate the source and the drain for this structure uh, which are defined in this block of the code here I save the structure call it in another block of atlas and I have introduced the work function for the gate, for the source, and for the drain. Uh, here I introduce different models into the code. Shock the red hull recombination, the, the print command, uh, CVT. CVT is a complete model including the transverse field, the doping dependent, and the temperature dependent parts of uh, mobility which are actually combined then we have the bqp.n and bqp.p models uh, these actually correspond to the band to quasi fermi population it describes how electrons and holes distribute within the conduction band and valence band under non-equilibrium conditions Then here uh, we want to output different parameters, uh, for example, the energy band diagrams, the current flow lines, polarization charges, etc. And I'm going to use the Newton method for the numerical calculation of uh, the analysis of the structure. Here I want to see the thermal equilibrium, energy band diagram, and other parameters of the structure. I save the structure with this name I fix the drain voltage at 5 volts and now I want to run a sweep from uh, uh, minus 20 volts up to 1 volts and this command over here is really crucial for the quasi static CV analysis of uh, the transistor so Kiva CV corresponds to quasi-static CV curve. In Kiva CV, we hold the drain and source voltages at uh, the same bias, and we ramp the gate bias, which will give us the bias-dependent capacitance. Then further.
we have created this log file and uh, here I save the structure and then plot the structure over here uh, then finally we use the commands of Tony plot uh, then plot this log file and then this command over here actually specifies the capacitance related data which should be extracted and visualized from the log file this typically involves plotting the capacitance as a function of the gate voltage and this is critical for analyzing the behavior of the aluminum gallium nitride gallium nit nit nitride hemp um, such as it's going to give us the gate control over the channel the threshold voltage and also polarization and depletion characteristics at the aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride interface and finally we quit running the code so we are at a point where we can actually run the simulation and also talking about this uh, bias step from minus 20 volts to 1 volt um, the smaller the step the higher the accuracy of this CV analysis is going to be but also it takes a really long time so now I start running the code This code actually takes a really good long time to simulate and uh, we are gon not going to see it all day to let it run. It takes a few hours. So instead of waiting, what I've done is I previously run the simulation and we already have, this, have the results. So here is the structure. Um, what we can do is we can right click on the structure, go to display, then contours, and then we go to contours and here we can actually see the current flow lines for example for the structure zooming in specifically on this region so you can basically see the current flow lines further we can also see the polarization charge concentration across the aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride hetero junction you can further zoom in on this area and we go to tools and then cut lines so um, here we see the polarization charges peaking at uh, around uh, around 32.5 coulombs per centimeter cube okay um, I, I have also run the simulation for looking into the ID versus VG characteristics of this uh, structure this ID versus VG curve um, is for aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride hems and it shows a flat region initially below minus 12 volts where we actually see negligible current and that is because the two-dimensional electron gas is depleted um, in uh, in this region 
which also means so where is the two-dimensional electron gas let me close this so here is uh, here is the two-dimensional electron gas at this point so below uh, minus 12 volts in the range of minus 12 to 20 volts actually the transistor is in off state and then we have the threshold region where we see a sharp increase in the current as the two-dimensional electron gas forms and the threshold voltage actually lies around here and then finally we see the saturation region where the current saturates with a fully formed conductive channel it reflects a strong gate gate control uh, good off state performance and it also demonstrates efficient two-dimensional modulation for the high electron mobility transistor furthermore if I right click on this structure go to display and this one is fine and then instead of the drain current I can choose gate quasi static CV hit apply and click OK so here is the quasi static CV characteristics of the device in farads per unit length versus the gate voltage the quasi static capacitance voltage curve is a uh, characteristic of the aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride high electron mobility transistor it reflects the behavior of the gate capacitance per unit length as the gate voltage varies uh, along the x-axis and it helps us to understand the interaction between the gate the aluminum gallium nitride barrier and the two-dimensional electron gas formed at the hetero junction so uh, we see multiple regions in this uh, CV characteristic curve we see the flat region over here then we see the transition region and finally we see the saturation region let us first talk about the flat region below minus 12 volts uh, in the flat region the capacitance is really low if I zoom in on the capacitance the capacitance in the flat region is around it's less than 3 10 to the power of minus 16 farad per micrometer in this flat region over here the gate voltage is sufficiently negative to completely deplete the two-dimensional electron gas at the aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride interface the gate capacitance is dominated by the thickness of the aluminum gallium nitride barrier and any gate dielectric material present which in this case uh, we have directly deposited the gate on top of the aluminum gallium nitride so we don't have dielectric insulator over here and this region corresponds to the off state of the high electron mobility transistor where there is no conducting channel now let us talk about this transition region over here the transition region is between minus 12 to approximately minus 6 volts over here in which the capacitance increases steeply so as the gate voltage becomes less negative the depletion region under the gate shrinks and the two-dimensional electron gas starts to form at the aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride hetero junction this rise in capacitance corresponds to the gradual accumulation of electrons at the hetero junction resulting in two dimensional two dimensional electron gas and this is actually the threshold region where the gate voltage transitions the device from the off state to the on state and the threshold voltage can be extracted from uh, this region which is around minus 12 volts now let us talk about the saturation region for gate voltage greater than approximately minus 6 volts the capacitance pretty much saturates at a higher value 
in this region the two dimensional electron gas is fully formed and the gate capacitance is at its maximum uh, the capacitance reflects the geometrical properties of the aluminum gallium nitride barrier and the charge density in the two dimensional electron gas this corresponds to the on state of the high electron mobility transistor where the channel is fully conductive now let us look into the physical insights for the aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride hemp what is the role of the aluminum gallium nitride barrier the so let me go to that particular figure the aluminum gallium nitride barrier introduces polarization effects piezoelectric and spontaneous polarization at the aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride interface which induces the two-dimensional electron gas and if we go to the code over here we have introduced the polarization effects over here in this line of the code so the thickness and the aluminum content of the aluminum gallium nitride layer significantly influences the capacitance behavior Uh, talking about the threshold voltage, the steep rise in capacitance marks the point where the two-dimensional electron gas starts forming. This is critical for identifying the threshold voltage, which is typically negative for depletion mode, aluminum gallium nitride, gallium nitride, high electron mobility transistor. The accumulation of the two-dimensional electron gas in the transition and saturation regions is critical for device operation the density of the two-dimensional electron gas depends on the gate voltage the aluminum gallium nitride barrier properties such as thickness and aluminum content in the aluminum gallium nitride layer and also on the polarization effects uh, the flat region over here it's uh, this capacitance helps determine the properties of the aluminum gallium nitride barrier and we don't have any gate dielectric over here but it also determines the properties of the gate dielectric then the saturation capacitance is linked to the maximum achievable charge density of the two-dimensional electron gas which is crucial for current handling capability of the high electron mobility transistor So, um, to summarize the key points, uh, the flat low capacitance regions represents the off state of the high electron mobility transistor. The transition region indicates the threshold voltage of the device and the high capacitance region corresponds to the on state of the high electron mobility transistor where the channel is fully formed. This curve is a critical tool in analyzing the device's behavior, for particularly in terms of the gate control, threshold voltage, and the two-dimensional electron gas formation. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope that uh, you found this uh, breakdown of the high electron mobility transistor quasi-static CV measurements and the uh, aluminum gallium nitride gallium nitride hemp analysis useful. Understanding the behavior of the two-dimensional electron gas, threshold voltage, and capacitance regions is crucial for optimizing hemp performance in real-world applications. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content on semiconductor devices, measurements, and simulations. Drop any questions or thoughts you have in the comments below and I will be really happy to help. Stay tuned for more videos, and see you next time. Adios.